Well, good morning, YouTube. It seems my cable cutting videos are garnering some attention, so time to update that playlist. This will be the first in a series of videos where I wanted to pass on some tips I found for setting up a media or home theater PC. I've mainly used Windows Media Center, so my suggestions will be somewhat focused around that. I have three main PCs that handle media, two of them almost exclusively, and I'll focus mainly on those. I didn't go the route of buying a home theater PC, or one specifically designed for home theater use. Instead, I used a vintage, repurposed desktop PC, and a second new all-in-one PC. I may upgrade to purpose-built media PCs in the future, but for now what I have is working fine. Why did I go this route? One reason was that I was testing the water, so to speak. I took my old 2006 vintage Gateway Office PC and set it up for media use to test out. I had it up and running for a year with a TV tuner card to convince myself that it was a viable option. Secondly, I plan on relocating my home theater setup to a different room in my house. I'll have less room there for equipment in the new location, so we'll probably get a much smaller media PC for there. But with technology moving so fast, it makes no sense to buy something now, only to have it obsolete in a few years when I actually need it. And thirdly, about the time I retired this old PC, Microsoft had a great deal on an XP to Windows 8 Plus Media Center upgrade that I decided to try. So I skipped Windows Vista and 7 altogether, going right from XP to Windows 8 in one step. For Windows Media Center, Windows 7 does give you the most options as far as add-ons and extenders. But my new Office and all-in-one PCs both came with Windows 8, so I decided to stick with that. So here are some lessons I learned about using an older PC for media viewing. Most important, keep the P media PC fairly stripped down. No screen savers, minimal add-ons, hardware, cables, etc. For example, don't run a SETI at home screen saver or mine bitcoins in the background. My general rule is if I don't need something to view media, I don't install it or I remove it if it's already installed. In use, I have the power and network cable, uh, the video cable one or two, and then I have two USB cables down here, plus a USB wireless uh, receiver for keyboard and mouse up front. Uh, with Windows 8, I'm just running the Windows Defender antivirus software on my media PCs. I've removed Norton or other antivirus programs. I only browse well-known sites on these PCs, and 99% of the time I'm watching things off my local network anyway. On my main PC, I have Norton antivirus and use that for downloading, uh, letting that screen and filter out the malware. I keep Microsoft Office, uh, email, and web browsers loaded so I can use these machines as a backup if my main Office PC goes down. As mentioned, one of my media PCs was this old desktop machine that's been repurposed. It has a dual-core uh, Pentium D CPU. It was originally 2.8 and I upgraded it to 3.2 gigahertz. It's usually running less than 50% CPU load, unless I'm downloading Media Center Guide data. I uh, redid the fans to make it uh, quieter and cooler. I swapped the noisy front fan for a quieter Silenex fan, and then I installed this Noctua variable speed fan atop the CPU heat sink before there was nothing here. This setup cools much better than the original fan did and is barely audible. And then I upgraded to this fanless NVIDIA GT610 graphics card. And again, no fan equals no noise. And this is the only card I have in the system. It's a fairly low-end GPU, but has enough hardware acceleration to handle full-screen 1080p video 
with minimal CPU loading. Now, I don't do any gaming on my PCs, but if gaming is important to you, by all means get a more powerful GPU. But realize that more power is more heat and fan noise. Uh, with Windows 8, much of the desktop graphics and media playback can be hardware accelerated, so even a modest CPU like this works fairly well. Let's spin this around here. See the other side. So I filled the system with four gigabytes of memory, although with the graphics card only about three gigabytes is usable. Let me show you the front here. So I have a DVD burner here, and then I have an old uh, three and a half inch floptical disk drive that I can use to read any old floppy disks. So anyway, this will wrap up the look inside my uh, recycled media PC. In the next video in this series, we'll look at some of the other system aspects for setting up a media PC. Stay tuned for that. You can subscribe for updates. And in the meantime, check out some of my other videos. As always, thanks for watching.